After a century, Kave finally returns. Now, if you always wanted Kave, he will be on this banner, so you should probably go ahead and get him now before he's gone for another century. But our banners are Navia and Nilu for the five stars, and then we have both their weapons, obviously. Good five star weapons, not great on the four stars, except for Xyphos. Xyphos is definitely the big winner here, but it's surrounded by a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> So, Cyphos is great. Dragon's Bane is, you know, okay. But the rest is just kind of eh. I mean, Rust is good if you just got Yoimiya or something like that. Like, it's a beginner weapon for Yoimiya. But, yeah, besides that, eh. Key of Kasha Suit is great and usable on multiple characters. Ironically enough, Nilu being a signature, but also someone like Kirara can use it as well. Right? And then Verdict is great if you have Navia or you want to get Navia. Right? So... And as far as the four stars go, Ningguang, Kave, and Kirara. The big winner here is Kirara, for sure. You know, Kave, yeah, he, you know, he can do some blooms and whatnot. Ningguang is like a, a four star Geo DPS. But for the most part, Kirara is the biggest winner here. Both of the five stars are great in their own respect. Navia is a Geo DPS who doesn't actually run the same teams as Ida. So you don't have to have Goro, you don't have to have like a mono Geo team. You can actually, you, you really want other elements, actually. I mean, that's her whole thing, right? She also gets an attack bonus as well with one of her passives, but you want other elements so you can create Crystallize, which is like her ammo for her shots, you know? So just big old numbers every time you do your shot, you know what I mean? Like 100k or above, like you're going to see some very satisfying hits with her and you can do it twice. So people like Chiori is a good fit, but... Chiori at C0, you're only going to have one of the dolls. So you can play her with her for more DPS. Like, you know, you can do Navia, Chiori, Shangling, Bennett. And, you know, that could be like a very simple team or have Farina teams in there. You just want Navia with other elements so you can actually play her correctly. But I'd say Navia is definitely one of the standout Geo characters. And I hope we keep going down this path as we go for more Geo characters. And personally, what I like about Navia is she's a character who utilizes her entire kit. So her normal attacks get used, her skill gets used, and her burst gets used. Don't look at my levels, but just know that she uses her entire kit. And I like when characters actually do that. I like when there's not just one talent you just don't really use, like somebody's burst or somebody's scale or something. You use the whole thing. So you generate Crystallize with your normal attacks who are, that are infused with Geo. This is your main source of damage, and then this is just another way to generate Crystallize. And Navia does have her own artifact set. But the artifact domain is unfortunately accompanied by Song of Days Past. And Song of Days Past is not bad at all. It's just like a healing set that buffs your characters. But you may not want this set when you're going for Navias. You know what I mean? So it's not the most efficient, but you can actually use this set. It's not like totally just nothing. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a garbage set. It's actually useful. So you will have to deal with that if you want to farm for her specifically. But there are some other options like Golden Troop. Unfortunately, you don't get the full benefit of that, so up to you what you want to do with the artifacts. As for Nilu, Nilu's actually pretty cool, because she has a mechanic that doesn't really we haven't really seen before, before she came out, where she actually makes a reaction more powerful. Like, she makes the Dendro cores blow up to do more damage. They're called Bountiful Cores for her. So you want to play her with a Dendro and Hydro team. Like, you want to have, you know, let's say two Dendro, two Hydro, but there's no limit. You can have three Dendro, one Hydro, or three Hydro, one Dendro, as long as you have both in there. And of course, Nilu herself, right? <laughs> so that's her whole thing. You want to build it with HP, as much HP as possible. You don't absolutely need her weapon, but it definitely is a big help. As you can see, it's a lot of HP and down here as well. You can use Xyphos Moonlight, which is going to be on the actual banner at the given time. Or if you happen to have a copy of the Doc Hands Assistant, you can use that as well. And for her, it's actually kind of the opposite of, of Navia, where you just want HP pieces. So the only two in the game right now are Varukasha's Glow and Tenacity of Melith, who give you 20% HP with your two-piece. So pretty easy to farm, two-piece, two-piece. Just, you know, step into that domain that's over here. I know people don't really, you know, they've never even been there before. But the one over in Sumeru in the newer area, the last area, I should say. Just go there, maybe try and get an HP piece, but don't worry about like specific stats on it. 
Heck, maybe even just wait for Natlan and then you can strongbox it. The most satisfying thing about Nilu is when you're playing her in AoE. When you're playing her in AoE, you see just a million numbers and they're not even like small. It's like anywhere from like 25 to 30k or higher. And you're just seeing a bunch of those numbers on the screen and it's just so satisfying, especially in an AoE situation. If you're not in an AoE situation, it's uh, not as good, but you can still possibly brute force it. Personally, I do not have Ningguang built, so I can't say much, but she is a DPS unit, so you'd build her like one. Crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, damage oriented weapon, two piece, two piece attack, or the Navia set, Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods, that can work as well. And also somebody who wants all three talents pretty much leveled up on the same page. Kave, once again, not really built that much either, but you definitely want him level 90 because he'll be reactionary. Um, I like the free weapon that we got from one of the events, but let's be honest, these never come back. So just a EM oriented weapon will do for him. And Flower of Lost Paradise set is usually the go-to because he's made the bloom. He's a bloomer. As far as Kaveh's talents go, you want to level this if you want to do like a DPS build. But if you're just going for a bloom, no, don't level that. Just level his burst. You can maybe give this a couple levels too, but you don't really need to. It's just basically damage. But if you're playing him as he's intended to be played, which is Bloom, you want to level this. But don't worry about this unless you want like a like crazy Kave DPS build. But yeah, that's Kave. Last one would be Kirara. She's going to be all HP, 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 HP. For so those last three pieces on your artifact sets, HP, HP, HP. Typically, you're going to want Deep Wood. Uh, cause she can be somebody who can carries it. She'll also be a dock hands assistant kind of character. If you have one lying around or any HP sword or any EM sword, she also uses IFOs as well. So, and as far as her talents go, if you want her as just a shield bot, this is the most important thing and that's it. But if you do want to get some damage out of this, you can level this as well, but this just does damage. I'm gonna make that clear, it's just damage. It doesn't actually do anything different, it's just damage and a little bit of application as well for Dendro, but just a damage thing. This is the main thing you want if you want her shield to be strong. At C4, she gets a really, really nice feature here where she actually just does Dendro damage for every like four seconds. You have to be doing normal attacks and you have to be within her shield. So make sure your shield is strong and if you want your shield to be strong, you gotta have HP, so. I'd recommend level 90 as well, especially when it comes to Dendro characters. You definitely want level 90 because they're very reactionary. So that's the deal with Kirara. Good character, fun character, good with Nilu teams, good with Sino teams. Just a Dendro shielder. And at C4 specifically, somebody who can apply Dendro within that shield every four seconds. But that's about it. That's your brief breakdown of these characters at C0 and what you're looking at. Of course, we do have a brand new character. On the next half, that is Emily, burning, not burning reaction kind of character, but just a character who needs the burning reaction to work. But she'll be here next next half alongside Yalon. So up to you. If you saw the characters for Natlan, so Mualani, Kanich, uh, Kachina, you don't know what they do exactly just yet. If you are somebody who wants to look at leaks, you definitely can. They'll be out there soon. And you can just see what they do and make sure you don't want them over the characters right now. But if you're basing it off of looks and design, you can just look at them on Twitter right now and see like, do I want these characters or not? I can just pull for the current banner or I'll wait for these guys. But up to you in the end. That'll be it for me. Uh, happy birthday to Hutao. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens for when Emily comes out. We'll definitely be... We'll definitely be playing a lot of Emily and testing her out as well. But that's it for the banner review. I'll catch you guys in the next one.